Well, it fits, sort of. Let's make it fit. Hello and welcome back to the shop. My name is Brett and we are continuing work on our little Keeland thoroughbred racehorse for the Keeland Mercantile down in Lexington, Kentucky. I spent, oh, about uh, uh, a few hours yesterday sanding on this little bow rocker that we started making last week. And I, again, I just didn't want to bore you with all of that because it's just sort of tedious and it's just repetitive and that kind of thing. And I'm trying to really work hard at the repetitive part of, of this channel. So I just went ahead off camera and just worked on getting these bow rockers sanded. Now we still have the stretchers just to sand and you know, on the fit and everything, but I just really was anxious to put this little horse up on top and just see how close it's gonna be uh, to fitting. Now, one of the little problems that I ran into, and again, I was kind of expecting this, actually two things. Uh, you know, when I go to bed at night and I think about what I've done throughout the day, I don't know what you all, some of you out there that, that create and build things and stuff, but I always run things over my head and I'll wake up the next morning and I'm still kind of running things over my head. Like even, um, you know, when I'm having coffee, I'll kind of, you know, think about, you know, the process of putting these little bow rockers together and what I'm going to do. So I sort of assemble it in my mind before I even get out here to the shop. And one of the things I thought about, and I'm so glad I did because I just was coming, gonna come out here, get things sanded, and then just move on, start nailing the stretchers right down to the bow rockers, you know, glue them and just, you know, just roll right along and try to get these finished. And then I got to thinking, now, wait a minute, we've never set this horse up on these rockers and if I glue these stretchers in and if they're a bit too long then I'm kind of sunk so you know that was one of the things once I got everything sanded I, I kind of just temporarily like you see here took one of my clamps and just clamped it and set it up there and sure enough you know these uh, the bow rockers were just a little bit wide and it really would have been kind of tough to set those so what I ended up doing is just taking about three eighths of an inch off the stretchers. And that's all I needed to do then put the back bevel back on. And that seems like that's gonna work. I could probably even take another eighth of an inch off, but I think that'll work. And I think we can go ahead and move on and get the hooves notched at some point here. But um, yeah, I, I like it. I think it's gonna work out really, really well. And like I said, I think what we need to do now is the bows are all sanded everything's pretty well done we can go ahead and take the clamp off and we'll go ahead and, and mark our stretchers the stretchers are a little bit wide so i think i cut them at an inch and seven eighths last week and it looks like we need to take almost three sixteenths off so we'll fit these to the bow rockers then we can go ahead and move on get everything glued down nice and tight we'll nail those we'll just use the brad nailer again Normally on a medium, a small medium uh, bow rocker, I'll put uh, screws in there and then put a cap, a cherry cap or something over top of that to fill the hole, you know, when I recess it. And for, for this, we're just going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue and we'll use one inch brad nails again and we'll just, you know, shoot those nails in and fasten this together. Then we can move on. We'll make the slats and we'll glue up some material for the turning. I may even have something thick enough that we can turn the two little turnings for the ends of these. So that's where we are at and let's get busy and let's get these little rockers finished up. 
All right, looks like we need to take uh, just a little bit off of these, maybe somewhere around like an eighth of an inch. Uh, I cut them, I wanna end up at an inch and seven eighths. I cut these, they're, they're almost two inches, somewhere around there, 15 16 So we just wanna take, I'm gonna take maybe an eighth of an inch off and then we can start from there. And I think we can just take off, I don't think it matters which side, uh, if we want to take it off the top or the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and take it off the bottom side, set my fence here. And if you noticed, I lubricated my lever here that raises and lowers. It, it squeaks a lot. I use a dry lubricant on that. And I, when I was editing the video from last week, I noticed that thing was really squeaking again. And I try to lubricate and keep it in there and it was annoying again. So made sure that I got that uh, lubricated for this week. So let's go ahead and let's just take a little bit off of this and then we'll go back over to the bench. We'll fit that. We'll see where we're at and see if we need to tweak those a little bit more. So just in case some of you are wondering maybe what kind of uh, lubricant I use on my tooling around here, uh, this is what I use. This is put out by PB Blaster. This is a dry lube. There's no silicone in it. Uh, of course, you don't uh, ever want to use anything like a WD-40 or like a PB Blaster True, like something that has an oil base or a silicone in it because that'll really mess your machine up. You always want to stick with something like a dry lube like this. Been using this for a number of years. It works really, really good. And of course, they're not a sponsor or anything. I'm just a little guy out here. But just, uh, you know, if you're wondering, that's what I use around the shop. Let's see how these fit. This should work pretty good. That one looks good. That one we could probably take just, just a little bit more. I could probably do that on the joiner over there. Just touch it just a little bit. Sanding would probably take it down. Ah, I think I'll leave it. I think it's just so minute. Everything else looks good. So let's go ahead. I'll get these sanded real quick. We'll put a little bit of glue down. We'll get these nailed on and get this all secured. And then we can move on. We'll get the slats uh, milled and we'll bring them over here. We'll get our slats put on. Then we can pull the lathe out and we'll do the little turning at the end. It won't take too long to, you know, get this all finished up. So here we go. So another little detail I almost forgot to add to our little rocking horse for Keelan is I have my laser engraver here that I bought about a year ago. And I bought that specifically so that I can do some special things. I could put, you know, names on horses, rockers, something like that. There's all kinds of things that I'm gonna be able to do with this. And one of the main things is I can burn my logo, of course, in, which isn't much, but I mean, it's just so handy to have it. I can just burn my logo on the bottom of, you know, the glider stands, the rockers, that kind of thing. Well, now let's go ahead and put the Keeland logo uh, in and burn that in. So I've got it in here in the uh, program all ready to go, and I've already got it lined up. So we should be good. I did a test run, but I thought it'd be really cool to do Keeland on one side and we could probably even do the date, but for now we'll go ahead and we'll put Keeland on one side on the underside of our little rocker and then I'll, the other stretcher on the inside we'll put um, my logo and we'll burn that on and then we can go back over and permanently glue and nail these on. I just think it's kind of a really cool little touch to add. So let's go ahead and frame it. Make sure that that is all lined up. That looks good. And all we need to do is hit start.
Isn't that cool? Just love that. All right, now we'll go ahead, we'll set up, and we'll burn my logo, Greenfield Woodworks, in next. So we'll go ahead and close this one. And look up, here's my logo. select it and we have to frame it there that looks good all we have to do now is hit start I'll tell you, I just love having, having that um, laser engraver here at the shop. And it, I'm always impressed every time I do play with that or do something on there, I'm always impressed at the detail, at how small of an image you can get and the detail that that thing will put in there. Just love having it. So we'll just give this a quick sand because I kind of burned it. I set the settings so it'll burn kind of deep. So we'll just clean them up here. So now we'll go ahead, we'll get some glue on these little stretchers and we'll get those nailed on and then we can set our little rockers aside to dry and then we can move on and get ready to put the slats down. A little bit of glue. I get asked an awful lot too, what kind of glue do I use here at the shop? I use Type Bond. I use Type On 2, always have, works great. And if you ever have any questions out there, you're always welcome to put a comment down below or email me. Uh, greenfieldwood at gmail.com. I'm always happy to, you know, answer questions or, hey, I'm, I'm happy. I'm fine with taking advice. I, uh, I certainly don't know everything and I'm always eager to learn. So if there's something you see me doing that you may say, hey, I know of a better way, by all means, let me know. Put a clamp on this and pull this in a little bit.
Good, there we go. These look really nice and even. Our little engravings look really good inside there. Perfect. All right, we have some material I've pulled out. We have lots of half inch material here, so we've got plenty uh, to go ahead and we can make our slats. We're gonna make our slats around one inch uh, wide and we'll go a half inch thick and we'll go over to the router table over here and we'll just put a little bit of a chamfered edge. We'll just knock that edge off, put a little bit of a bevel edge on there. Then we'll come back here, we can start nailing these down. And again, normally on a medium or a small horse on bows, I would screw those down. I'd countersink the screw heads and then fill them and everything. Being this is so small, just a doll size, one inch brad nail is gonna work just fine. A Little bit of glue and we'll nail those down. So let's go ahead, we'll head over to the table saw. Let's get our slats milled and we'll get everything finished up. So I pulled some material out earlier and this piece was a lot longer and I cut it in half because it had a slight bow to it. And I wanna be able to run this through the table saw. I'm gonna slice this in half. Unfortunately, this piece is only about 15 16 inches wide or thick, and we are two and a half inches wide. So we're gonna be able to use at least one part of this because our slats are gonna be finished at a half an inch thick. So we can go ahead, we'll slice this in half, and between that and this piece here, we should have plenty of material. We need 11 slats. We should have plenty of material here to go ahead and get our 11 slats. So let's set our fence. I'm gonna set it around 5 eighths of an inch thick. And we'll go ahead and we'll run these through. Now I like to run through, you know, I'll do half the cut. I'll raise the blade up and we'll do half the cut, flip it upside down and then finish the cut and do it that way. It's a lot safer. Good. I will run over, I'll run these through the planer real quick, get them down to a half an inch, we'll come back here, we'll cut our one inch slats. Set our fence to go about an inch and maybe a sixteenth, an inch and an eighth, so that I have plenty of room there that I can run it over the joiner and just clean up these edges. Now I've already got a side uh, on here, an edge that's joined. So we're good there. I don't have to do that. So let's go ahead and we'll run these through.
let's go ahead and run these slats over the jointer. I've got it set here to take maybe just a 30 seconds of an inch off of here. I just want to just take enough off either side. We're just going to clean up the saw marks, the cut marks on here, and then we can head back over to the bench and get everything cut to length. So now our little rockers here, they're six, six and three quarter inches wide. So let's go ahead and make these seven and seven and three eighths ought to work. It ought to give it a nice overhang, a nice little shadow line or profile there. So let me get the slats all cut and then we'll get them laid out here and then we'll move on. We'll set our stop up that way we don't have to measure each one we can just roll right along and cut them out now when i put the slats down on on bow rockers i like to put the first three slats down I don't do anything with the ends. I just leave them as a straight cut. And then from there, we'll take a degree off either side and then we'll follow the contour because these little bow rockers, they do start here wide in the middle and then they just gradually taper in. So I like to follow that little bit of taper. But the first three, I just like to put down nice and straight. You know, something like that. I have little uh, spacers that we can stick in between here. And that's really it. This shouldn't take us too long to get these nailed down. Now I did cut an, a couple of extra slats because I wanna lay these out here and just take a look and see how they all look. And if I have one that is questionable, then I can just change it out. There we go. Good. That'll look great. Okay, let's head over to the uh, router table now. We'll put a little bit of a bevel edge on this, and then we'll come back over. We'll start getting our slats nailed down. Now, I already have the height set. I have the bit in place. Uh, the height, uh, that's up to you. I just, you know, I'll do a test run and take a look and see, you know, what looks nice on, on the material that I'm, you know, or the thickness that I'm working with. So I've already got that set up. So all we have to do is just run these pieces through.
Good. Let's give these a quick sand and we'll nail them down. Now that we have our three starter slats nailed down nice and tight, I'll set the camera up here on the bench so that you can see a bird's, get a bird's eye view of what I'm doing here. Because from now uh, here on out, the next slats we do, we're gonna just knock a little bit of a degree off. We're just gonna cut them on either end. And then we're just gonna follow that contour right up so that when you look down this, it has a nice shape to it. So yeah, let me get the camera. Let me get you set up in the tripod and we'll get this little rocker finished up. There we go. So like I said, we'll just take a degree off and we'll follow this shape, this contour right up on either side. We'll get these nailed down and get these finished up.
There we go. See how nice that looks? Now a couple of these are off, maybe by like a sixteenth or so. I can run the sander over that and just kind of blend that all in so it's nice and smooth. I mean, all of this needs sanded again. I'll fill all of these nail holes. But yeah, see how nice? Just love these little rockers. Next up, we're going to do the turnings. I'll get some material pulled out. And of course, we'll get our lathe pulled out and get everything set up and we'll turn the two little turnings here and then we'll come back over and get those fitted. And then these little rockers are all finished. Looks great. So I pulled out uh, a piece of cherry out of my scrap pile and I went ahead and I cut it and I milled it down. It's about an inch and five eighths square. So that'll work really well. It's about 12 inches, 13 inches long. I like to go a little bit long when I do my turnings. So we'll go ahead and get this chucked up in the lathe and we'll get this turned. I think I'm going to turn it, finish somewhere around an inch and an eighth or so. I think that'll look good for this particular little horse. So let's go ahead, we'll get everything set up and let's get this turned. Now normally I'll go ahead and knock these corners off, but being that we're, it's not that big of a piece, it's not gonna take that long to just go ahead and get this round. So I wasn't worried about that.
Nice, our little turnings are finished up. They look pretty good, I'm happy with those. I'm not the greatest at the lathe, I've said that a lot of times. Uh, you know, that's the, that's the fun about woodworking is there's always something to learn. I know enough at the lathe to kind of make myself dangerous and you know, get by. And with these little ones, I just like to do a simple turning and I think it looks great. If you notice there too, when I was just finishing up, and that not that the way it always goes? I just had everything pretty well done and sanded, and I went in and put these little lines, these decorative lines in, and I chipped one out. But, uh, you know, as Bob Ross used to say, those are happy little accidents, and I was able to sort of adapt and overcome, and yeah, I think they still look really, really good. Good, well, I'll go ahead and get these cut apart, and Next up, I want to notch the hooves. I don't want to set these little turnings just yet. I like to set the horse first. I like to get those hooves notched. And then if I need to kind of adjust these, then I can do that with my turning. So yeah, that's where we are at. Let me get these cut apart and then we'll get the horse over here and we'll start notching the hooves and get it fitted to this little rocker. Boy, that's not bad for sort of eagle-eyeing it. I'm, I'm really, really close. Good. Now, since we have our burned area underneath here, I always like to make my logo the back of the horse, and that's how I determine what is the front and what is the back. So my logo is back here, so we'll make that the back of the horse and then we can go ahead and kind of center it here and then uh, yeah we'll get these notched
Now that the hooves are notched to the rockers, we can go ahead and we'll cut our little turnings here and get those fitted. Now, what I've come up with here that I use when I go to cut these, because you want to cut these on a 10 degree angle as well. I just kind of made myself a little sled. I just took a couple of pieces of scrap and cut up, uh, you know, a 45, a notch in here so that these turnings, no matter what size I have, this will fit my little turnings from for doll size up to you know a medium horse so this works out really really well i can go ahead and adjust my saw to 10 degrees and then we can go ahead kind of slide it to one side and cut them Our turnings are cut and it looks like the way I'm going to go ahead and attach these is I'm just going to use my brad gun again, my air nailer. I'm just going to shoot maybe an inch and a quarter, inch and a half nail, brad nail into there and put a clamp on that and just let the glue set up a little bit. So a little bit of glue, a brad nail, that's all it's going to take. And then uh, these little rockers are pretty well finished. And there we go. There's our turnings. They're on the little rocker. Everything looks good. Uh, you know, when I eyeball them down there, I look for that horizontal to see if they both match. They look really good. It's really, really close. 
The hooves notched beautifully, so this horse is sitting really, really nice on these rockers. And I'll bring you in here, um, you know, here in a minute, and I'll show you. We'll do a little walk around with it. But boy, it looks really, really good. What do y'all think? I think it's, I think it's going to look great. Awesome. And with that, I think that's where I'm going to leave things for this episode. Next week, we're going to come into the shop. We're really going to be heading into the paint booth. Now, we still have, I'd say, a good day's worth of sanding on this guy and the rockers. I still want to add a little bit more carving details throughout our horse, especially in the legs. And we're going to add a little bit in the head. The eyes, I'll go ahead and get those set. There's not going to be much there to see anyways because they're so small. But yeah, we're going to be into the paint booth next week. This little guy is wrapping up really, really quick. Well, once again, I really appreciate you all hanging out with me here at the shop. And if you got something out of this video and you, you're getting something and you're learning a little something out of me uh, building and, and watching me build this little horse, please drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this little guy. I just love it. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Uh, it really helps me out in the long term. Of course, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. And speaking of Facebook, you know, don't forget to check out the Rocking Horse Makers Facebook page and also Rocking Horse International. Great group of folks on there. You're going to learn a lot and you're going to see some fantastic horses on there as well. Well, until next week, happy carving and we'll see you here again. Take care.